Use code SPIKEFEEDERS for 5% off at facetofacegames.com. You can shop face-to-face -face games in US dollars, Canadian dollars, or even euros, and they'll ship just about everywhere. That's code SPIKEFEEDERS at checkout at facetofacegames.com to help support the show. Spikes, what is up? We are back with game eight of Major League Commander. This is gonna be the last game in the series, and if you're curious about why we're not playing the full 10 games, stick around until the end. Today, our hero Jim is playing Grease Fang. This is an Orzhov vehicles list with a heavy focus on stacks. We're using those hate bears to crew the vehicles and hopefully provide a bit of a clock. Next up, Sakita is playing Tana Arden Nea Stoneblade. This is another creature combat focused deck, so I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to play with Grease Fang. Next up, Cobblepot is playing Thrasios Armix. This is a Saltai Razaketh list that focuses a lot on getting incremental advantage throughout the game. And finally, in turn order, Squirrel Mob is playing Kenrith Evolution. This is a five color good stuff deck that does play Fast's Oracle and Demonic Consultation, but focuses mostly on Dockside Extortionist combos. And with that, let's get right into it. Turn zero, Sakeda has a pregame effect. He discards Arid Mesa to play Gemstone Caverns with a luck counter on it. This will tap for any color of mana for the rest of the game. With no other pregame effects, Jim starts off turn one by drawing a card, playing an Arid Mesa, and passing. Sakeda draws a card, plays a Battlefield Forge, and casts a Mana Crypt. Fearing the Avon Mind Sensor, Jim responds by cracking Arid Mesa, going to 39, grabbing a Scrubland. Sakeda casts Tana and passes the turn. Cobblepot draws a card, plays a Polluted Delta, and casts a Jeweled Lotus. He follows it up by casting Chromox, exiling Arbor Elf. He cracks his Polluted Delta, going to 39, grabbing a Tropical Island, and uses it to cast Thrasios. He follows it up by casting Armix, and when that resolves, he passes. Squirrel Mob draws a card, plays a Marsh Flats, then casts Elves of Deep Shadow. He moves to pass the turn, and Jim casts Enlightened Tutor in his end step, grabbing a Mana Crypt. Then Squirrel Mob passes the turn. Jim starts off turn two by untapping and drawing a card. He plays an Urza's Saga as land for turn, and casts a Mana Crypt. He uses the mana to cast Cultivator's Caravan, and with no responses, he passes the turn. Sakita rolls for Mana Crypt and takes no damage. He taps two to dash in Ragavan. He swings Ragavan at Jim and Tana at Squirrel Mob. There are no blocks, and Sakira makes a treasure. Jim's top card is Thalia, Guardian of Thraven. The Tana triggers, and Sakira makes two Sapperlings. He plays a Gaia's Cradle as his land for turn, then casts Null Rod. Cobble can't have that, so he counters it with Force of Will. Sakira casts Arden and follows it up by casting Jim's Thalia, then passes the turn. Dash triggers, and Ragavan returns to his hand. Cobblepot untaps, draws a card, and casts a Deathrite Shaman. He then casts Elves of Deep Shadow, then moves to combat. He swings Armix at Squirrel Mob, and there's no blocks, so he passes the turn. Squirrel Mob untaps, draws a card, and plays a Plateau, then casts Archon of Ameria. That's it for Squirrel Mob, so he passes. Jim untaps, flips for Mana Crypt, and loses the flip, taking three damage. He puts a counter on Urza's Saga, then plays a Vault of Champions which comes in tap due to the Archon. He casts Grease Fang with one mana floating and lets it drain, passing the turn. Sakira untaps, rolls for Crypt, and loses, taking three. He draws a card, casts Ragavan, and passes. Cobblepot untaps, draws a card, and plays a Flooded Strand, which comes in tap due to the Archon. He passes the turn. Squirrel Mob untaps, draws a card, casts a Birds of Paradise, and passes. Jim untaps on turn four, and in his upkeep flips for Mana Crypt. He loses again, taking three damage, then draws a card. Urza's Saga triggers to add a counter, and Jim holds priority, activating Urza's Saga to make a Construct token. Urza's Saga trigger resolves. Jim searches for a one-drop, grabbing Soul Ring. He plays a Snow-Covered Swamp as his land for turn and casts Unmarked Grave. It resolves, putting Smuggler's Copter in his graveyard. He moves to combat, and the Grease Fang trigger brings in Smuggler's Copter. Still in beginning of combat, he crews Smuggler's Copter with the Construct token. He attacks Cobblepot, triggering Smuggler's Copter. Draws a card, and discards Chromox. Cobble doesn't block, and Smuggler's Copter returns to Jim's hand at end of turn. He passes. Sakira untaps, wins his Mana Crypt flip, then draws a card. He casts Archon of Ameria. He moves to pass the turn, and in his end step, Cobble activates Thrasios. He scries a card, bottoms it, reveals Spellseeker, and puts it in his hand, passing the turn. Cobblepot untaps, draws a card, and casts Spellseeker. It resolves, and when it enters the battlefield, the trigger grabs him a crop rotation. He passes the turn. Scroll Mob untaps, draws a card, 
and casts Sylvan Safekeeper. With nothing else to do, he passes the turn. Jim starts off turn 5 by untapping, flipping for Mana Crypt, and taking no damage this time. He draws a card, plays the City of Traders, and casts the Smuggler's Copter. It resolves, and he passes. Sekira untaps, flips for Mana Crypt, and wins the flip. He draws a card and casts Stony Silence. Jim responds by crewing Smuggler's Copter. Sekira moves to combat and swings the Archon at Cobble. Cobblepot doesn't block. In Sekira's end step, Cobble cracks Flooded Strand and grabs a basic island. Still in the end step, he activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling Squirrel Mob's Marsh Flats to make a green, then casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing his island to get his own Gaia's Cradle, which enters tapped. Sekira continues to pass the turn. Cobblepot untaps, draws a card, and plays a Scalding Tarn tapped. He activates Thrasios, scrying one, putting it on the bottom, and reveals Mystic Remora, putting it into his hand. He casts Mystic Remora, which costs one more due to the Thalia, then passes. Squirrel Mob untaps and draws a card. With nothing to do, he passes to Jim. Jim untaps, flips for Mana Crypt, and takes no damage. He draws for turn, then casts Giver of Runes, then moves to combat. He attacks Sekera with the 5-5 Construct, and Sekera blocks with a Sapperling. Jim passes the turn. Sekera untaps, rolls for Crypt, and takes 3 damage this time. He casts Commander's Plate, which triggers Mystic Remora, and he taps Cradle to pay for it. He equips the plate to Tana, then moves to combat, attacking Cobblepot for 5. Cobble declares no blocks, takes all 5, and Sekira makes 5 Sapperlings off the Tana trigger, then passes the turn. Cobblepot untaps, and pays for Mystic Remora. He activates Thrasios, scrying 1, keeping it on the top this time, and revealing Findhorn Elves. He activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling Jim's Arid Mesa to cast Abrupt Decay, targeting Thalia. He moves to combat, discarding Wishclaw Talisman to Armix's ability to pop Squirrel's Archon. He declares his attacks at Squirrel Mob with Armix for 3, and there's no blocks. Cobble moves to pass the turn, and in his end step, Squirrel Mob casts his own Abrupt Decay, targeting Stony Silence. This triggers Mystic Remora, and Squirrel Mob doesn't pay. Cobblepot draws a card, the Abrupt Decay resolves, and Cobble continues to pass his turn. Squirrel Mob untaps, draws a card, plays a Watery Grave tapped, and casts Finale of Devastation X equals 2. Mr. Grimora triggers, and Cobblepot draws a card. Surprise, surprise, Squirrel Mob grabs Doxide Extortionist, and when it enters, it makes 10 treasures. Then he passes to Jim. Jim kicks off turn 7 by untapping and flipping for Mana Crypt, taking no damage. He draws a card for turn, then immediately moves to combat. In beginning of combat, he crews Smuggler's Copter with Greasefang and swings at Sekera, triggering Smuggler's Copter. He draws a card and discards Deafening Silence. Sekera takes three from the Copter. Then in his post-combat main, Jim casts an Aethersworn Cannonist. Jim passes the turn. Sekera untaps and rolls for Mana Crypt, taking damage. He draws a card for turn, then equips the Commander's Blade to Ragavan. He moves to combat, swinging Tana and five Sapperlings at Squirrel Mob and Ragavan at Cobble. Squirrel Mob blocks one of the Sapperlings with Dockside and takes a total of 6 damage. Cobblepot declares no blocks and takes 5. Sekira makes 2 more Sapperlings off the Tana Trigger, and the Ragavan creates a treasure and exiles the top card of Cobblepot's library. It's a Thassa's Oracle. In his post-combat main, Sekira equips Commander's Plate to the Archon. He moves to pass the turn, and Cobblepot cracks his Scalding Tarn going to 17, grabbing a Watery Grave. Then Sekira continues to pass the turn. Cobblepot untaps, and in his upkeep, Mystic Remora triggers and he pays for it. He plays a Morphic Pool tapped, then casts Findhorn Elves. He activates Thrasios, scrying one to the bottom, and reveals Mausoleum Secrets, which he puts in his hand. He passes the turn. Squirrel Mob untaps, draws a card, and casts Kenrith, Danger Zone. Squirrel Mob passes the turn. On Jim's turn 8, he untaps and flips for Mana Crypt, taking no damage. Then he draws a card for his turn. He uses the Aethersworn Cannonist to crew Smuggler's Copter and moves to combat, attacking Squirrel Mob for 3 in the air. This triggers Smuggler's Copter, so Jim draws a card and discards a Snow-Covered Swamp. He casts Imperial Recovery Unit, paying for Mystic Remora, then passes. Sekira untaps, flips for Mana Crypt, and takes no damage. He draws a card. He plays Yavamaya as his land for turn. He equips Commander's Plate to Tana, then moves to combat, attacking Cobble. Cobble casts Brainstorm, then after it resolves, he declares no blocks. Tana triggers, and Sekira makes five Sapperlings. He casts Archon of Valor's Reach. Squirrel Mob casts Mana Drain and doesn't pay for the Mystic Remora, so Cobble draws another card. The Archon is successfully countered. 
Sekira equips Commander's Plate to the Archon of Ameria and passes to Cobble. Cobble untaps, and in his upkeep doesn't pay for Mystic Remora, so it goes away. He draws a card, then casts Neil Form, sacrificing Spellseeker. Squirrel Mob counters it with Swan Song, so Cobble makes a bird. Cobblepot activates Thrasios, scries the card to the top, and reveals Windfall. He plays a Breeding Pool tapped, then activates Thrasios. He scries to the top again, and this time reveals Razaketh. He moves to combat, attacking Sekera with Armix. This time, he discards Razaketh to pop Tana. Sekera blocks with his Archon, and Armix dies. And Cobble passes the turn. Squirrel Mob untaps, draws a card, and Mana Drain makes him 6 mana. He activates Kenrith to draw a card, then activates it again to draw another card. He pays 4 to cast Natural Order, sacrificing Elves of Deep Shadow. Cobble casts Mausoleum Secrets in response, grabs Assassin's Trophy, then Natural Order resolves. Squirrel Mob grabs Seedborn Muse this time. Jim starts off turn 9 by untapping, then flipping for Crypt and taking damage this time. He draws for turn. He casts Grand Abolisher. He uses Aether Sworn Cannonist and Grand Abolisher to crew Cultivator's Caravan, then moves to combat, attacking Sekira with the Construct, and 5 at Cobble with the Caravan. Sekira blocks with a Sapperling, and Cobble blocks with his Bird. Then he passes the turn. Sekira untaps and rolls for Mana Crypt, taking no damage. He draws for turn, then equips Commander's Plate to Ragavan. He moves to combat and swings at Cobblepot, who declares no blocks and takes 5 damage. Sekira makes a treasure, and Cobblepot reveals Windswept Heath off the top of his library. Sekira casts Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, and immediately activates its minus two ability. He looks at the top three cards, exiles one face down, and in his end step, Squirrel Mob taps four to draw a card off of Kenrith. Then Sekira continues passing the turn. Cobblepot untaps and draws a card. He plays Underground Sea as his land for turn. He casts Animate Dead, targeting Archon of Valor's Reach. It resolves. He moves to pass the turn, and in his end step, Squirrel Mob draws a card off of Kenrith. Sekira flashes in the exiled card, which is an Aether Sworn Canonist, and Cobblepot continues to pass the turn. Squirrel Mob untaps and draws a card. In his pre combat main, he casts Neoform, sacrificing Birds of Paradise. Cobblepot activates Thrasios, scrying a card to the bottom and revealing Time Twister. He activates it again, scrying again to the bottom and revealing Demonic Consultation. Neoform resolves, and Squirrel Mob gets Phantasmal Image. It enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist with a plus one plus one counter from Neoform. In response to the Enters the Battlefield ability, Sekira flashes in Elishnorn, and James responds by activating Kenrith to put a plus one plus one counter on his actual factual Dockside Extortionist. This resolves. James activates Sylvan Safekeeper, targeting Kenrith, sacrificing his Bayou, then activates it again, targeting his Dockside Extortionist. This gives both of them Shroud. The Elishnorn resolves. The Phantasmal Image ETB trigger resolves and makes him 11 treasures this time. James then presents a loop to repeatedly sacrifice and reanimate Phantasmal Image to make 100,000 treasures, then activates Kenrith to draw us all out. If you're curious about the ins and outs about this combo, we have a video coming out tomorrow that explains all of it. Make sure you keep an eye out. Hard loss today, and that brings my record through 8 games to 2 and 6. That's a 25% win rate, and I'm pretty happy with it. Now, at the beginning of the season, I had planned to play 10 games, but there was a little bit of an awkwardness and we couldn't schedule the last game during the last week of the season. Unfortunately, trying to get four adults in the room at the same time can be pretty tough and real life gets in the way. I'm not going to get into the ins and outs of what happened, but the three of us in the final two games collectively agreed to concede to Nick, Predatory Pickle, and that punched his ticket to the semifinals. So this is going to be the last game in this MLC series for us. But if you like this format, don't worry. We're going to be recording some games soon with our patrons, and I'm going to be summarizing those and releasing them in this format. So until then, we'll catch you next time. Huge thanks to all of our patrons. We love trying new things like this, and your support really makes it possible. Hey, thank you for checking out the Spike Feeders on YouTube. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button before you close the window, or you can click on this link to check out our other great videos.